until you make it. Yeah. I don't use fake it, because I don't have nothing, I, I, I don't do fake, but I just want us to keep our eyes on this fake it till you make it over here. Because this is a message within itself. All right. So I just want to kind of let you look at that. Now, good evening everybody. Good evening. I don't know what happened to my keys when I pulled it out my purse, but I, I, I want you to pull your keys out, just like we did last week. I want you to pull your keys out. Because this is what we're talking about. We're talking about keys up here. Yeah. Okay, I found my keys. All right. Yeah. They're office keys. 
but they don't work for the night. All right. Did anybody get a chance? Hi, Lady T. Hi, guys. Did anybody get a chance to look at the lesson, at least read chapter 3 and 4? Mm -hmm. yes. Did anybody Amen. get a chance to do that? Yes. Now, this is not a trick question, but I'm just going to ask it. Here it is. When you was reading this about the colonies and also about becoming a citizenship, mm -hmm. he talked a whole lot about what was going on in the islands because he's a Bohemian. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Every word that he spoke, I took it as the Lord was speaking. Right. Yeah. Did you right. do that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Take it as yes. if the Lord was speaking to you. So as we go, and, and, and I got this book highlighted, and this is even not my teaching style. I don't highlight anything, but I highlight because it, it was so good, it was so rich, mm -hmm. and it was so pure. Yeah. And I read it yeah. just as if the Lord was talking to me. Now, I just want to go back just uh, chapter 2 real quick. Because we didn't touch that last. Right. You was you touched it. Well, I'm gonna bring it back to you. Citizenship versus membership. I'm on page. I, I don't know why I said 36, but I guess I meant 39. I just want to pull this out. You will hear two terms used interchangeably: the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Right. Mm -hmm. They both mean the same thing, except that the first one is referring to the one who owns the kingdom, the one who reigns and rules, mm -hmm. and the other is referring to the territory. The, so, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. We do not realize that all of us possess dual citizenship in a physical country or colony and in an unseen one. We just want, just, want to just pull that out. Citizenship comes with more guarantees and privileges than membership does, along with specific responsibilities. You can become a member of a community within your colony or country, but your citizenship is what ties you to the community in the first place. Right. So when we're thinking about community and we're talking about citizenship, we're talking about kingdom citizenship. Yeah. So you have to have a relationship with God in the first place mm -hmm. in order to gain the community. Mm -hmm. Citizenship is a legal position. Memberships is more of an accommodation. Citizenship is a legal position. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Right. Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Yeah. Membership is more of an accommodation. And that's just like being involved in like a, a boat club or anything like that. You can have a membership status, mm -hmm. but the rules can change at any given time. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when you in citizenship with the Lord, you're already in. The rules never change. They stay consistent. Mm -hmm. I just want to point that out moving on in chapter 2 before we move on. Did everybody have a great day today, a good week? Amen. Everybody was excited about Amen. coming to Bible study yes. and getting excited about the Word of God. Amen. I am thankful and I'm blessed for the opportunity to be here with you tonight. And I pray that there is something that will be said and or done. I know you read the book. I did too. But we're going to just go through this book. And I'm going to try to do it as fast as I can. It's so rich. It's so much meat. But we're going to just try to push, press our way. I want you to jump in if you have a question. You hear something that's awesome, bring your keys. <laughs> bring your key. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can do that again. Keys. Speaking of keys. Many of you have this key. I've been wearing this key for a long time. For a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about keys to the kingdom for a second since we were rattling keys last week. It's important that you find something, I don't care what that is, that works for you. These keys, it's a work day. I have to remind myself, no matter how the day come and go, I'm a membership, I'm a citizen in the kingdom. And as we move on to chapter 3, we're going to be talking about how you got to show yourself. You gotta act like you are kingdom.
Mm-hmm. You got to act like you're a citizen of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. You can't just say it. Right. You got to be about it. Yeah. You walk this thing out. You're going to meet a whole lot of opposition. And I think Deanna said it Sunday when someone joined the church Sunday or whatever. Whatever day it was, but I heard you say these words. The real work comes when you come into the kingdom. Mm-hmm. It's not when you're out there doing whatever it is that we're doing. Mm-hmm. It's when we come into the kingdom. Mm-hmm. And that's when things really you have to show yourself. Mm-hmm. By definition, anybody know a definition of a citizen? Just one from your own. Just shout it out. What, what do you think when you're thinking of citizen? And as you already said, you read this book, thinking about the Lord himself. Anybody? He belongs. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? He got benefits. <laughs> he got benefits. Amen. Benefits. Anybody else? As a citizen. Yeah. A definition of citizen is someone who owns allegiance to a government and who is therefore entitled to receive protection. In this story, it writes some benefits of citizenship. Miles, Dr. Miles Monroe was talking about how valuable a status it is to be a citizen. He also talked about the people are willing to do all types of things to obtain it. He was talking about from a perspective of him being a Bohemian mm-hmm. and people coming over there, a lot of Haitians moving in. Mm-hmm. They didn't have the credentials, but they wanted to come mm-hmm. to an area where, as Reverend Hall said, they wanted more benefit. Yeah. So people did a whole lot of things to be able to receive that benefit. They married somebody that they didn't even know. Mm-hmm. Or or you forged, the, well, I didn't, but he talked about people forging documents. It is something how we don't have to forge any documents. We receive the benefits mm-hmm. by stepping into the kingdom. And Matthew 6 and 33, it just kept just coming to me like a neon sign. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven mm-hmm. and his righteousness, mm-hmm. and all other things shall be yeah. added unto you. Yeah. That's a true statement. Mm-hmm. I usually try to get some uh, scripture, and that's probably Pastor Menachal, I can remember it so well, because if I... I find it in the word. Whatever it is that I'm dealing with or that's come on my doorstep, I find it in the word. Amen. And when I find it in the word, I don't just read that. I don't just follow it away. I post it. I even make it my password because it's just something. I, it's a go-to word. It's going to help you get out of what you're getting out of. Mm. That Matthew 6, that thing right there, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. Not mine, not yours, but seek his. And all other things shall be added unto you. That's kingdom living. Amen. That right there. Philippians 1 and 6. I didn't write this down. I'm probably getting ahead of myself. I was just thinking of things. How can I begin to think? that I am a kingdom citizenship. You know, sometimes we hear, and we read this cover, and we looked at the book, kingdom citizenship, but do we act like we are? Mm -hmm. Do we believe that we are? Mm -hmm. Here's how you do that. You start walking that thing out. Just like this says, you have to faith it till you make it. That you have to do. So, when you believe that you are a kingdom citizen, you have to keep thinking it, keep acting like it, keep speaking it, keep reading it, and just and keep praying about it. And I'm going to move on. The best way to obtain improved benefits and rights is to become full citizens of a successful and well-to-do nation. Well, you probably would have didn't look at it like that. We're not talking about nations. We're talking about becoming a well-to-do citizen. We have to join a well-to-do nation. Mm. How about you have to join well-to-do churches? Mm. And when I mean well-to-do, I'm not talking about influential. I'm not talking about money. 
I'm talking about people who believe the Bible from the beginning to the yeah. end. Yeah. People who walk like they are yeah. children of the Most High God. Mm. The benefits of citizenship in a country with a kingdom system of government can far outweigh any benefits of citizen in even wealthy places yeah. and non-kingdom forms of government. And I'm just going to whiz right through rights and benefits of citizenship. <coughs> this is because ideally the king's wealth will be distributed broadly to his citizen. Isn't that just how God does? Mm -hmm. He has no respect of person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He distributes everything to everybody freely. The word tells us every good and perfect gift comes from above. Mm -hmm. Everything you need is mm -hmm. already provided by God. It's evenly distributed. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> evenly distributed. Right. <laughs> Remember our definition of the kingdom. A kingdom is the governing influence of a king over a territory, impacting that territory with his will, his purpose, and his intent. The power of citizenship. I'm now on page 52 because I'm in Chapter 2, chapter 3. The power of citizenship, and I just kind of scripted some things out that I felt that was powerful. You may have seen it, but I want to just say it. Mm -hmm. I know when you're working with students, you can say it, mm -hmm. but when you put your eye on it or you can hear it a second, a third, or fourth time, you make that more plain. Mm -hmm. Becoming a citizen, especially a citizen of a kingdom, such as the kingdom of God, means that you become powerful. Amen. Your citizenship Amen. is the source of your personal authority mm. where those rights are concerned. You have the power to demand things. Yeah. All right. Amen. By the power of your citizenship, mm -hmm. you can call in constitutional yeah. privileges and promises. Mm -hmm. That just comes to remind you that you didn't come to stand around. Mm. You didn't come uh -huh, to just observe. Mm -hmm. You came to take over. All right. Ring, 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 ring. <laughs> you didn't come to stand around. You didn't come to take sides. You came to take over. I want you to remember what you're here to do. Citizens have rights, and they do not have to pay membership dues to keep them. Citizenship is permanent if you want it to be. Mm. Had you ever thought about that? You have to want it to be. Mm -hmm. All right. You do not have to, just because it's permanent, mm -hmm. we can't abuse that. Right. Every day I say to the Lord, Lord, I thank you for these gifts that I have. Mm. I ask you, Lord, that I will not be able to abuse them but I will continue to be able to use them. You always want to be able to operate in your gifts. If you don't know what your gifts are, <coughs> ask him and he will reveal it. But be careful, be cautious, because when you ask God for anything, he will give it to you and in abundance of it. Mm -hmm. Just like John 10 and 10, the B verse of the part says, that the Lord said he came to give you life and that you shall. You will have it more abundant. Mm -hmm. That's abundant living. It's abundance in everything. Everything that you should ask. Mm -hmm. God came for it. Once you are a citizen, you are no longer a mere member. Mm -hmm. You are a legal creature, which means the law protects you. That's the Bible. That's the word. So if you was reading in the, in, in the context of this was the Lord speaking, the law is the word. Mm. God protects you from absolutely everything. Only by going all the way through the citizenship, citizenship initiation process can you become a citizen. For your part as a citizen, you need to submit to the rules and regulations of the government. That means you have to do your part in what you do for God. You cannot go out and do things that's against God. All of this crime and all of the breaking news that you hear every day, we have to do things that's pleasing to the Most High God. And that's what it means by, for your part as a citizen, you need to submit to the rules and regulation of your God, not just of your government. Mm. 
the, the, that citizenship covenant gives you so much power that you can even attack the government. Did anybody read that? Did it? I'll read it for you again. Citizenship covenant gives you so much power that you can even attack the government. Okay. I know Romans 13 and 1 talks about how we must respect authority. But before you get excited about attacking the government, here's three ways you can do it. How about we take our souls to the polls? As All right. Say. That's, what That's one way of attacking the government. They can't control us if they don't get in. That's right. Here's Amen. another reason. Stand on your knees, mm. fasting, and praying. Mm -hmm. That's attacking the government without putting nothing, not a finger on them. Mm -hmm. Because it's your relationship, it's your faith. Mm -hmm. You are a citizen of this kingdom, the kingdom of God. While we're here on earth, we have, we have ways that we can do things to change where we are. Just mm -hmm. like this coronavirus. Sounds like a plague to me. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that sound like a plague to you? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yes, it does. That's, that plague, is, that's, that's something. Uh -huh. And then why at a time such as this? Mm -hmm. But that's something to think about also. Here's a third reason how you can attack your government. You can make a difference. How about pull your dollars? Mm -hmm. You know, when you pull funds from something, mm -hmm. that gets their attention really quickly. Yeah. So those are things that we can do when we know that we're citizens of this kingdom. We can be powerful to the point where we can attack the way things are. Mm -hmm. And how to do that is by praying and fasting, voting, and not only just voting, making a difference. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Citizenship is a privilege. Mm -hmm. After all, you can't just have it for the asking. You, you, you can't just have it for the asking. Citizenship is not a right, but it is a privilege that gives you rights. You cannot demand it, and you cannot hurry it up. When the Lord is ready to bless you, he's going to do it. The provisions has already been met. Mm -hmm. Philippians 1 and 6, that reminds me of that each and every time. Be confident of this very thing, mm -hmm. that he who has created a good work in you, mm -hmm. you, you, and you, mm -hmm. he said he will perform it onto the days of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's a promise. That's also how you know that it's a privilege. It's mm -hmm. already been granted. It's already been given. <coughs> Entering into citizenship, you do not have to practice or rehearse being a citizen. He was talking about how he had never had to do anything to show up and be a, a, a bohemian. All he had to do, because he was born and raised there, it was a natural given thing. Just like how God does us today, we don't have to practice it or rehearse it. We just have to believe him. We have to have faith in him. We have to trust in God that we are who he called us to be. Mm -hmm. We can experience it right here, right now. Mm -hmm. It's here. It's just here for us, for mm -hmm. the ask. You do not have to wait until you're older. And I know we have to grow into things, but it's here right now. Mm -hmm. It's right here for the asking. Mm -hmm. We can explore your own citizenship. That means we so free. We heard uh, the Holy Spirit was half Sunday. It was some free people on Sunday, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. In that vein, we can be free with this thing. In this citizenship, be free. Be able to walk and go. You can read your Bible. You can be free in knowing that all things is going to be okay. No matter what it is, a bill do, whatever it is, a job situation. Don't worry about it. It's already been provided. We just have to know within ourselves. And it's easier said than done, I done heard us all say. Mm. But you can do this thing. Be free in it. Stay in the word and know the word for yourself. Amen? Amen. Amen. Apply your rights. Lay hold of the benefits and ask for the protection. 
That sounds like to me that you get in on your face and you pray and you ask God for whatever it is that you need. You ask him for wisdom, ask him mm -hmm. for strength, ask him for deliverance, ask him for whatever it is so you can apply the rights as a citizen. Mm -hmm. You can live in the culture right where you are. Mm -hmm. You can embrace, live your life just as if you're rich. Now, I'm not saying run out there. I heard Pastor Minnick say you don't have to buy a car that's got a backup mirror. You can a backup camera. You can just turn your head. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying go out there and buy a, a, live beyond our means. When I say live rich, you can be poor and be down to your last. But you know from which your help comes from. It might be your last right now, but lack don't last. We've all experienced it. Lack does not last. Mm -hmm. Ask him, Lord, let this be my last day of lack. Let this be my last moment of lack. Mm -hmm. Ask, Amen. ask Amen. him. Doing that. Yeah. I mean it. I'm not Amen. telling you anything that I've not done. This is not something that I scripted and just wrote down. Yeah. Sometimes it's just easy for me mm -hmm. to be transparent. When you have a hidden agenda or a hidden mm -hmm. secret, that's the enemy's territory. That's his playground. Here's how you live free. You don't have nothing to hide mm -hmm. because you've already confessed your sins to him, amen? Mm -hmm. You've asked for his forgiveness. Yeah. He has taken it and thrown it into the sea of forgiveness. Yeah. So what you hiding for? Mm -hmm. If you did it, you did it. But you seek God. Ask God for whatever it is. You have not because you ask mm -hmm. not. Good. There's scripture Amen. to support ask and it shall be added unto you. Not and it shall be opened unto mm -hmm. you. Seek and ye shall find. I said it back with ASK. Mm -hmm. Ask, seek, not. Mm -hmm. And that's true. I remember one day we were in your stu um, Bible study, and I'm looking at Danae, and I can see her just explain. We were reading Psalms 23 and 1. The Lord is my shepherd, mm -hmm. and I shall not want. Mm -hmm. That baby said, well, What does that mean? Mm -hmm. And Pastor had to explain it to her. I don't think you remember because you were so much younger then. But ask the Lord. The Lord is your shepherd. Anything you want, if it's his will, I have to put that disclaimer out right, there, right. it has right. to be in his will. Yeah. And you have to ask for it, and you have to be ready for it. Mm -hmm. Father, if it be your will, mm -hmm. allow me to, mm -hmm. and whatever that is. Yeah. So you're not just operating in your own strength. He right. left you with power and authority, but you still have to ask God if mm -hmm. it be your will. Mm -hmm. Live life like you're rich. Mm. Speak highly of yourself and others. Now that's not to say I don't want you to exalt yourself. Mm -hmm. Stay humble. But it's okay to exhort other people. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to speak good of yourself. Because when you start feeling good about yourself and speaking of yourself highly, you begin to walk in the overflow blessings that God has for you. You can't receive his blessing if you downtrodden, yeah. if your head yeah. hung down. Mm -hmm. You can only yeah. receive him by looking what? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now that all, you ought to shake your keys. Uh -huh. I know that's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, a couple of years ago, I lose track of time. Anyway, uh, Reverend Denmark preached his sermon. That said, it's okay to be blessed. Amen. Yeah. 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 If they ain't walking in authority, I don't know what well, that's right. You, yeah. Because it is okay to be blessed, but sometimes we downplay our blessings. Yes. You know? But it's okay to be blessed. Yes. We, need to show, we need to show people Amen. what comes with authority. Amen. And that's part of it. And, Amen. and thank you for that because that is exactly my point. <laughs> thank you for bringing that out. That's exactly the point. How can you, on your job or wherever you are, convince somebody mm -hmm. to join the kingdom mm -hmm. when you don't act 
kingdom ready. You have to walk in authority. You have to, it's okay to be blessed. Yes. It's fine. Yes. You have to do for you because people are watching you. How are you going to perform? How are you going to act? Live in the culture. Live in the blessing. Live in it. You don't have to be of it, mm -hmm. but you live in it. Mm -hmm. You gotta be mindful. Yeah. Yeah. We're just passing through. This is not our home here. Mm -hmm. We are foreigners. We're in a strange land. Mm -hmm. But since we're here, mm -hmm. we know how to live this thing. Mm -hmm. We can still celebrate and dance out our clothes just like David. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can. Because it's okay to be blessed. Amen. Amen. I love that. Submit to the constitutional laws. Hmm. Wonder what's the constitutional laws and codes of conduct. Mm -hmm. Constitution, I don't want you to look at it like it's the United States Constitution ever again. The Constitution is your word. All right. See it as the word of God. So, you're going to submit to the will of God in everything and watch how he worked. Know that the Constitution is also, as I said, it is your work. Now, I want to move on. I just kind of want to just give you just a little foundation of what's going on here when he was talking about the citizenship and he was basically talking about how things were in his country. I also remember seeing a section where he was talking about how before this new citizenship, this new colony, they were taken over, they were over, British rule was over them. Mm -hmm. And when British rule was over them, and I do know what he's talking about because I've been to some of the Virgin Islands, and some of the Virgin Islands really are, some of my British rule still. Mm -hmm. And when you're in that type of British rule, your roads are paved, they string lighting, your, mm -hmm. your, your roads are paved, they're not rocky, bumpy, and all that kind of stuff. You have clean water, uh, things are brought in on a fair, you food, meat, whatever. When that culture changed, they're back to, they have to pay for everything on their own. So I wanted to bring that up, the Holy Spirit just dropped it in my mind. That's the difference when it's between the world and God. Mm -hmm. He already provided the way. Yeah. Yeah. Everything is paid for us. Everything. We don't have to worry about having to get it on our own. Mm -hmm. Now, he does provide a way for us to go and go to our jobs and work and, and, and take care of our livelihood and basic living. But we can't do that if it wasn't for him. Yeah. Yeah. What right. if you had a broken arm? What if you had a broken leg or mm -hmm. missing leg? You can't do none of these things. It's all in his power. It's mm -hmm. all in his will. Moving on. Anybody have any questions so far? Yeah, one question. He speaks about the uh, citizenship. What is the Ephesians saying about the fellowship? He said you're no more strangers or foreigners, but now you become a, a, a fellow citizen. What is the Ephesians saying different from citizenship? What is Ephesians saying about the uh, fellow citizens? Well, what, what chapter are you coming from from Ephesians? Ephesians uh, 2 and uh, 2 and 19. Okay, read it for us. It says that down there, down therefore, you are no more stranger than foreigner, but fellow citizens with the saints and with the household of God. That's right. So there's a difference mm -hmm. between uh, citizens. No, it's the same thing. Read it again. You, the answer was right there. You Say it out loud. You are no more strangers. You're no longer a stranger. Born of a fellowship is the same thing as a household of God. You're no longer a stranger. Of, say it out loud. You're no longer a stranger of God because you're mm -hmm. now in the fellowship. You adopt, you, 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 you engrave it into the fellowship of God. Mm -hmm. That's what the difference is with that. Once you know God and you're in there with him, you're a citizen of the kingdom. 
You don't have to work for it. You don't have to do nothing else. You're already grafted in. Amen. Amen. That's what that's saying. In Genesis 1 and 27 through 28, it tells us that before we were created in our, uh, it, it, we were created in his light mm -hmm. and in his image. And the scripture say, let us, mm -hmm. so it already mm -hmm. told you that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they were right there the whole time. Mm -hmm. And then when they planted, when you were planted in your mother's womb, you were already set apart. You was already blessed. You was already provided everything you need. That's right there in Genesis 1, 26, 27, and 28. Amen? Amen. Any Amen. other questions whatsoever before we move on to... Uh, one more yes. thing, no question. But I just wanted to bring out the fact that as children, uh, most of us, when you went to school, part of the morning ritual was what? The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Mm -hmm. So I just made a little note it would be good if when we start our day, we would pledge allegiance. Mm -hmm. You know, to the absolutely. Mm -hmm. hey, hey, pledge man. allegiance. Hey, Amen. Amen. What's today? Today, Wednesday? Uh -huh. yeah. Every day, I got a girlfriend at work. Mm -hmm. I'm going to miss her when I leave. Every day at work. I say good morning or whatever her name is, but I would say it's a it's a magnificent Monday. It's a twice as thankful Tuesday. Mm -hmm. It's a winner take all Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. Every day mm -hmm. when you get up before your feet hit the floor, have your ritual, your prayer with Him before you swing that leg out mm -hmm. your bed. Mm -hmm. But when you go to your job. Many a days I've said, Father, cover me. I'm going in. Mm -hmm. I've had to yeah. say that. Yeah. Cover yeah. me. Mm -hmm. I'm going in. Right. But you go in coming to you. When you go into that workplace, you can't bring in what happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. You can't even, because it's over. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Because it's over. Mm -hmm. You have to come in with a new attitude. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. We shall rejoice mm -hmm. and be glad in it. Mm -hmm. Show some sign. Right. And every day, name your day. Give it a day. Give it, yeah, mm -hmm. every day. Friday. Instead of saying, thank God it's Friday, say it's a faithful Friday. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Say it's a, oh, wait. It's, it's a surrender all Saturday. It's a sinless Sunday. Mm -hmm. give, your, give, your give your day a name. That's a ritual. Mm -hmm. Every single day, I send Chrissy Chris an email. And it starts with, I forgot what I told her. He, Monday, it was, he's in the midst Monday. And so we had something that carried over Friday from our office to Monday and she was feeling some kind of way that email said good morning Chrissy Chris he's in the midst Monday <laughs> and so they got her mind off of it mm -hmm. it's a ritual mm -hmm. and these are things that you have to faith it faith it that you have to do don't fake it faith it faith it Hey, yes, Tony. This attitude that even as we are walking in our kingdom authority, in our own families, in our own development, we look at our king was given his manifesto in these three chapters, five, six, and seven. Mm -hmm. Not only are we walking authority, we have to realize this certain behavior that's expected of us. Because even in our own families, our parents are telling us, no child of mine is going to act this way. They expect us to carry ourselves. That's and right. And our king expects us to carry ourselves, conduct ourselves as if not only we have the authority, but we are actually in his image and reflecting what he may have. Amen. 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 Because we don't know what he looks like. And he's the image of each and every one of you. And how do we get the unchurch or people, the unbelief, how do we get them to recognize and understand 
that they too are kingdom citizens. Mm -hmm. How do we get them to that? We have to walk it. We have to walk this thing out. What's your question? Um, so I'm actually really, really, really enjoying this book. Um, but a question to ponder um, about the power of citizenship, and not only that, at what point do we begin to detach ourselves from the citizenship? Meaning that um, we don't use the promises that come along with the citizenship. Amen. Like we can have, say for instance, a, a Discover card all our life that we use um, but we may not use it maybe for three months or two months, mm -hmm. but we know that we still have that Discover card in our wallet with all of these benefits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't treat the promises like that when it comes to the citizenship. Mm -hmm. When we go through hardships, we automatically um, forget start, about yeah, forget right. about that we have Mm -hmm. This discover card of promises that we can yeah. use because we are citizens of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So what at what point, what happens in our lives that we detach ourselves from the power of citizenship? And we mm -hmm. act like we can't pull our card. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> and, but and, and this is a question to ponder since and, we're talking about citizenship. Yes. We all after we become Say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We have all these promises that are yay and amen mm -hmm. that we can use for trials and tribulations mm -hmm. that we come up against. Mm -hmm. But there comes a point, and I've done it in my life, where, you know, I don't pull my car. Uh, okay. Right. Right. Definitely not first. Not, for, not first. <laughs> right. right. I don't say, hey, because I'm a yeah. citizen of the kingdom, mm -hmm. You things. say this, this is my promise, and I'm going to use it. For, so, just a question to ponder. Well, when now, we, <laughs> here it is. We have to grow to that. Mm. It's, it's a growth process. Each and every time that we're, we're faced with a situation, mm -hmm. and I like how you said that, have a credit card right in your pocket, and when you use it. Here it is. You have to grow to that. When you start seeing things happening in your life, Mm -hmm. And then the Lord bring you out of that. You look back on that, or sometimes we forget about what God has done. Mm -hmm. But when you get into a situation, mm -hmm. and you look back on your life about a time that God mm -hmm. has brought you mm -hmm. out, mm -hmm. not Kim, not me, not Pastor, but when God has brought you out, right. if He did it before, mm -hmm. He will do it again. Yeah. Oftentimes, experience will bring you back into the fellowship. Because when you've tried everything in your own power, in your own strength, and it still don't work, you turn right back to the Word, the Constitution. You turn back to the Bible. Amen. I think it's probably uh, we get back to and forget because we have so many Being stripped being away. Commonwealth, being taken away. Mm -hmm. and, uh, dual citizenship mm -hmm. cause us to forget. Amen. Mm -hmm. The things of what, what Reverend Hall said, the things of this world. Mm -hmm. The things of this world is designed. The enemy said he came to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. That's that's true. Evil is always abounding. It's always mm -hmm. around at all times. And this is why 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 tells us that we have to be unmovable, mm -hmm. unstoppable, and always yet abounding in the work of the Lord. You have mm -hmm. to be mindful of these things, mm -hmm. and that will help you. Situations in the world every day. What's scripture saying? What shall we say to these things? All right. That's true. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. So coming back into the dual, the principle of dual citizenship, throwing down your anchor. Mm -hmm. When I, I love that. 
Yeah. Our citizenship should be a source of security, and we all need to be anchored somewhere. Mm. We, what's that song said? There's a storm out right. on the ocean, yeah. and it's moving this it way. Yeah. That, that's yeah. what the word say. Right. But if your soul is not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. That's a, that's true. So you got to be anchored in something. And if you're going to be thrown on your anchor, and that just means straight up be flat-footed for this thing called life and living this life of Christ. Amen? Amen. Stop making the earth your first reference. I think that's what Erica Hall, that's where uh, Reverend Hall was. Stop making earth your first reference. We know we operate based on what we see. It's the unseen that's really working in our favor. It's unseen. Just like an earthly citizenship, heavenly citizenship is safeguarded. Even if your fellow citizens do not like you, they cannot strip it from you. Yeah. Under the covering of your heavenly citizenship, you can avoid the contentiousness that comes from the kingdom of darkness, and you can steer clear of the bad advice that leads to dead end solutions. When you learn to make a priority of your kingdom citizenship, mm -hmm. you find yourself in a win-win situation every time. Mm -hmm. And that's how you win. Yeah. <clears throat> when you come to terms with it. It's the thing for the darkness. Ephesians mm -hmm. 6 helps us with that. Ephesians 6, I believe, 10. It talks about how we have to put on a whole armor of yeah. God. You have to prepare yourself because this fight, this battle is not yours. It really is the Lord's. Dual citizenship is particularly powerful when it is both earthly and divine at the same time. Mm. See there? Oh. That just mm -hmm. gave you permission that you can live a great life even right here. Yes, the Psalm 27, yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe what, verse 8, 18, it said, you shall see the goodness of the Lord in the yeah. land of the living. Yeah. And you yeah. shall see it. It's just yeah. said it right here. Dual citizenship is particularly powerful when it is both <laughs> earthly and divine at the same time. Mm -hmm. The kingdom economy is never affected by anything. Mm -hmm. and all the power of heaven is working in our favor. Mm -hmm. That's true. Your future is secure and so is your present. Mm -hmm. Even right now. Yeah. None of it depends on what happens in this world, good or bad. Only on what happens in heaven. And in heaven, everything is always okay. <laughs> Amen. 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 Everything is okay. Amen. Now, time to pay your dues. <laughs> in this time to pay your dues, he was talking about you cannot do a country like you do a ritual. Mm. Think about how many times are you a citizen? At what time of day? For how long? Only on the weekend for an hour? Only when you are using a certain language or eating a certain food? You just are a citizen. If all the lights go out, you're still a citizen. If you do not pay your taxes or your tithes, you're still a citizen. Now you might not be, you might be irresponsible, or a cheat citizen, but nonetheless, you're a citizen. <laughs> and if you are a kingdom citizen in good standing with your king, you will go far. That just goes to show you, that backs up Matthew 6 and 33 again. When you do righteous things, live righteous, God always has your back. You don't have to worry about what you're going to wear tomorrow, what you're going to eat, mm -hmm. where you're going to live, mm -hmm. what you're going to drive. You don't have to worry about any of that. It's already taken care of. But you must be in good standing with your king. Mm -hmm. I like this one right here. The kingdom is within you. Yeah. It's already there. Yeah. The, mm -hmm. It's already there. There's reason why that scripture said, greater is he than yeah. you. you. Then he, and I like to hyperize it and say that run rampants in the world. I like to say that. <laughs> that's what he's doing. He running rampant, tearing up everything. You already know what that is. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Mm. And this is how you have to mind yourself. 
Isaiah 61 and 1 tells us, the spirit of the Lord is upon us. Mm -hmm. If you don't remember nothing I said tonight, the spirit of the Lord is upon you. Mm -hmm. Always. Always. He said he would never leave you mm -hmm. nor forsake you. That's truth. Mm -hmm. In this kingdom authority, in this king, being a kingdom citizenship, it's tough. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't sit here and say, oh, that's easy peasy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got to do it again. Mm -hmm. You got to faith this thing. You got to trust God like never before. Because uh, I think Tony only hit on that, even in your own home. You, 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 you have to, some things that you would like to say, you can't say. Mm -hmm. Because you're being watched there too. Mm -hmm. and you just clown and just, just turn out your house, just turn the place out. Because <laughs> I can. Right. But, well, you want truth, don't you? Yeah. Okay, well, truth serum is high. You want to be very careful in how you engage, even in your own home mm -hmm. because the enemy is always watching right. yes. and he's right. looking for That's just right. a toenail in mm -hmm. and he is yeah. not, not a fingernail toenail <laughs> <laughs> he just wants just that toe in <laughs> and then he came in and he's run rampant in your house mm -hmm. so That's be right. careful mm -hmm. in your home anoint your door handles mm -hmm. Speak of the Lord. Open your door. Nothing to eat. Nobody ringing the doorbell. Nobody coming or going out. Just open your door and just let something out. <laughs> Every day. Mm -hmm. Every day. Mm -hmm. Walk in your home and pray over your stuff. Pray over your home. Let whatever's in out and let what's out in. Mm -hmm. Every day. Be very careful. Because he's watching and lurking on every side. Mm -hmm. And we have to, if we know better, what we say we do. Yeah. We do better. Mm -hmm. So in this kingdom walk, in this kingdom life, be mindful and be reminded the kingdom is within you. All you have to do, I think my little key five I was looking for, it says, let your light shine. Mm -hmm. Let your light shine. Mm -hmm. Just be a walking testament. Don't worry about how people are going to look at you. People are going to treat you differently. Mm -hmm. We have to grow up and we have to get over ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we have to know this is life or death. Which one will you choose? Mm -hmm. And you want to live. And you want to live righteously. And you want to exhibit and you want everything that God has for you. And in order to get that, be mindful. The kingdom is already within you. Don't mess this thing up. That's what I'd say. Hey, what is different about you? Here's what people say. You don't go with us to the club anymore. <laughs> Until the wee hours. You carry yourself differently. You even drive differently. What happened to you? They didn't see anything happen, but they can see you change. There it is. Signs, miracle, wonders, and manifestation. Mm -hmm. You've changed. Things that you used to do, you don't do it anymore because you know better. Things that you want to say, you can't say it anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't just pull a pin and just let the bomb go where it goes mm -hmm. and you just keep walking. You cannot do it anymore. Also, as a citizen of the kingdom, you should be distinctive in a similar way. You begin to forget how to speak the same language as the country you used to be a part of. Mm -hmm. When we say country, that's your tribe. Mm -hmm. That's people that you be around. Your cousin now, Pookie and Ray Ray coming to you. Yes. I got a new definition of wealth. Mm -hmm. After reading this book, it says wealth is the
Mm -hmm. Write that down, people. Mm -hmm. Write that down. What, what's the new word for wealth? Access. Access. Amen. God. Amen. Now, that is why your old friends know they can't use dirty words around you anymore or gossip or persuade you to tell a lie. Something has changed and it is your citizenship. After a while, the people around you will learn what to expect. If you ever noticed that you had some friends that you grew up with and you look back some years later and you're not friends with them anymore, or if something just happened in a relationship, in a friendship, oftentimes it's not nothing you've done. That's just God paving the way for you. Because we already heard that cliche, everybody can't go where you're going. But it's just that God will save you from yourself. Mm -hmm. He will He will, He will. will keep you from situations that he know that you're not strong enough yet to handle. Mm. So he'll just move that individual right out your way. So accept the blessings, because oftentimes rejection is really God's protection. We say that all the time. Amen. When we, and I like this little box we're going to talk about on the next page. Getting the culture back. We pick up bad behaviors and attitudes. When we are away from home for a long time, that means we out of our elements. We out of church. Let's look at it that way. You out of church. You missed a couple of Sundays. So for you've been out for a long time living in another country. That means you out in the world doing your thing. We pick up what's the world do? Mm -hmm. yeah. We do. We pick up worldly That's behaviors. Right. But if you notice, when you forsake the fellowship of the saints, you tend to stay in there. You tend to believe more. You with like-minded people. You start doing things God's way again. Mm -hmm. Not your way. Not your neighbor's way. Not your boy's way or your girl's way. You start doing things God's way again. Mm -hmm. Because once the Lord has revealed and showed you something, you know. You've seen it before. And sometimes it just be for your eyes only. Mm -hmm. When we become citizens of the kingdom of heaven, we have some learning and unlearning to do. Mm -hmm. We have been away from home so long, we think we are <laughs> earthlings, and we have picked up earthly culture. <laughs> that is one of the biggest reasons kingdom citizens need to pray. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh-huh. Start Matthew 6 and 9. That's right where it is. Thy mm. kingdom come. Thy will be done mm. on earth as it is in heaven. As a matter of fact, kingdom citizen is one of heaven's reps. And he or she needs to represent that country every place you go. We talked about that already. Everywhere you go, you be a beacon of light for the Lord. Don't say you're on a battlefield for the Lord and not. Every day, be willing to represent him. And serve and worship him in mm -hmm. spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. You carry the king's authority with you everywhere you go. That means that when you go to work in the morning, mm -hmm. heaven comes with you. Mm -hmm. We talked about that already. Heaven drives your car down the highway. <laughs> heaven stops at a gas station to buy fuel. Yeah. Yeah. How does heaven act under pressure? If someone cuts you off in traffic, Watch how does heaven respond? Oh. These are all things strength under control. Mm -hmm. These are all things that even though nobody see you, mm -hmm. or maybe nobody knows you, mm -hmm. Father is always watching. Amen. So I bring to you, what is your contingency plan? What is it that you are setting up and planning to do to move forward now that you're get, entering into a glimpse of the access? You're seeing all of this kingdom citizenship and this right and this power that you have. What is it that you're planning? What's your plan mm. moving forward? I'll say this. I'll go first. <laughs> We're seeing all this breaking news. It's always something happening every day. It's breaking news. Mm -hmm. How about your breaking news tonight is, I'm a kingdom. I, I'm a citizen in the kingdom mm -hmm. of the most high. And that's your breaking news. 
moving forward here on out, step out. Hmm. Trust God. Know who you are in him. Know that you're a citizen. And don't be defeated. Don't let what's already defeated defeat you also. Now is the time for us to step up. Mm -hmm. And remember, we didn't come to just stand around. Yeah. We didn't come to take sides. We came to take over. Let's be about it. Amen. 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 teaching on tonight. Amen. Good job. Amen. I'm going to just comment on uh, I had five things, but just oh. one thing. Oh. i just go down to one thing. And one thing as a, uh, in response to the question that Minister Deanna asked uh, as far as uh, that detachment, detaching ourselves uh, from uh, from the kingdom, mm -hmm. citizenship, great analogy with the card. I would challenge the, the, the responses that were given, and I would challenge the responses this way, to say that how about you never knew what authority you had? Mm -hmm. I would say that you never knew that you were a citizen of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. I would say that you never knew that you had a discover card. Okay. I would say that you never knew that you even had certain rights as it relates to the dual citizenship. Mm -hmm. You had no clue what the Constitution said, mm -hmm. what was in the Constitution, mm -hmm. the d three different levels, branches of government. Mm -hmm. I'd say you never knew. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Okay. I challenge you whether or not you actually mm -hmm. knew that you actually had the level of authority that you received when you became a child of the king. Mm -hmm. I would even challenge you to say that you didn't know that you were actually a child of the king. Mm -hmm. I would say the only thing wow. you knew is that you were a member of a church. Oh boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. And you didn't know anything oh, else. Okay. And that's oh, why when some have seen the phrase, uh -huh. Uh, from membership to ownership, it's so confusing is because all I know is how to be a member of Costco, a member of Bally's, a member of LA Fitness, and a member of AAA. I know if I pay my dues, that I can go in at certain times of day. I have a certain level that I can get into, but when it actually comes to my spirituality, I didn't and don't have a clue as to what God has given, granted me access to. I would challenge all of us that we have yet to understand what God has actually given you, provided for you, made ready for you, and even has even equipped you for. Yeah. Because if you knew, you, would, you wouldn't Amen. sit down on that gift Amen. that God gave you. Because if God has given you the gift, the one thing that you would learn to do is to not only exercise it, but, but to get it to a level to where it just flows like water. Yeah. And that's why sometimes some of us have gifts it's been revealed to us what the gift is, and when it comes time to activate it, we sit still and don't even access with the card that God has given you that says, swipe your patheticness. I challenge you that the problem is we just don't know. Wow. Wow. <laughs> We don't know. We don't know. And that's why, that's why when trouble comes, 
we become like Barney Fife, we get shaky. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why yeah. it's so easy for us to talk about one another. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's because we don't realize, we, 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 we quote quickly scripture that says, touch not thine anointed. Uh -huh. yeah. But the truth of the matter is, everybody that's in the kingdom is anointed. Yeah, yeah. So you would keep your mouth off yeah. everybody. Yeah. So if you got, if you spewing negativity, yeah. you're talking about one of the king's kids. That's right. You're not just talking about anybody. That's right. Because if you can be a king's kid, Come on, I can be a king's kid. That's right. Yes, so, so it is it, not a matter of of whether or not I was born into poverty. Okay. Once I understand my kingdomship, yes, I don't have to stay Amen. in poverty. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. I don't. And again, going back to what you have, there, that's when you can you can still live. Yeah. In the in the in the arena or the place or the, the domain that you were born in, mm -hmm. yeah. but you can still walk around like a king's kid. Yes. Yes. So the problem yes. is, we don't know. Right. So I challenge everything that was expressed, I challenge everybody that's listening, is that you need to know, and, and again, as it talked about this environment, and, and I'm going longer than I planned, <laughs> but in this environment that we're in, one of the things that, that, that's happening, uh, uh, go go page 56 real quick. Real quick, real quick. Those that have their books, 56. Says citizen and passport holder. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Right now, everybody's in a rush to get what they call real ID. Yeah. <laughs> and that you've got to have real ID. Uh -huh. In order to do what? Move around. Yeah. And if you don't have your real ID, you can't go nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is part of this citizenship when it's talking about the dual citizenship. Yeah. They're saying you gotta have real ID. So what happens when it comes to our spiritual realm? Where is your real ID? Where's your passport? Most of us, again, we have no clue. Mm. On what kind of what ID are you supposed to carry to be part of the kingdom citizenship? Wow. Wow. What am I carrying? So, so to be a, a citizen of the United States, I, I got a birth certificate. I got, I, I got, I got, I got, I got a social security card. I got, I got all of these things to say that that I'm I'm, I'm part of this the, this. Citizen of the United States of America. But what are you carrying? What are we carrying? No, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. That's why I'm saying I'm challenging everything. It's because of our lack of knowledge. What are you carrying? What are you supposed to show? Scripture tells you. What am I supposed to show that? That says that I'm one of his. The love of Christ. The love of Christ. Yes. That's not the blood. It's the love of Christ. It says that you, they will know that you're part of my citizenship. My if you show love one for another. So that's what I'm supposed to carry. That means if I don't have nothing else. I don't have anything else. I'm supposed to show that I love one another. And I can't pick and choose on which day yeah. who I love. I can't just go sit some over here and sit over there because I ain't loving them today. That's why we don't know what we have. And that's why the world doesn't know who you are. They said, he says, they will know. You ain't got to open your mouth, but if you're showing love sure. one for another, yeah. it speaks for itself. Yeah. 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 That, 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 that's. Drop the next piece. Right. Just drop another piece. Yeah. Just drop hey. it. <laughs> So if you're a dual citizen, if one citizenship is saying you got to have certain things, yeah. the other one says you're supposed to have certain things too. That's right. And you need to know what those things are. Mm -hmm. And why are we want willing to stand in line yeah. 
to get our real ID. Some people are still in life, standing in line for five hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then we don't want to stay in the house of the Lord for more than 35 minutes. Yeah. Where's your citizenship ID? Where's yeah. All right, I quit. Uh -huh. Just drop another one, son. Drop another one. I love the book. I love your teaching. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to go home. Glory to God. So for those that are, that are watching us via social media, uh, we're glad you tuned in to us on today. Uh, again, we're grateful for the teachings of Reverend Lynette. Um, and I just wanted to just give a couple points to say to challenge all of us. Mm -hmm. Challenge all of us is that you're supposed to carry your citizenship to the kingdom every day. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing that you can put in your wallet. Mm -hmm. It's about everything that you have in your heart. Amen. Amen. Wow. That's what you do. So for the, again, those that are watching us, we ask that you tune in again next week. Uh, uh, Minister Parker will be here. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll start at, on Sharp at 7 o'clock so that we can get through the study. Thank you all so much. Uh, and that's it for you you guys. Good night to y'all. And then we'll have prayer with everybody else. Uh, I want to say is that on tonight.